how to start a home bar, which alcohol should you buy first, and how not to drink it all at the first party. Right now on Dr. Cork. Many viewers of my channel ask me how to start putting together a home bar, because when you go to a liquor store, your eyes get lost and you don't know what to grab onto. That's why I'm here. Today I'm going to talk specifically about alcohol, it's a big topic on its own right, and we'll talk about bar equipment, utensils, furniture, shake techniques and other stuff in other videos if this one gets enough views and likes. So give it a like and let's go. The first rule of home bar, like in a fight club, is not to tell anyone about your home bar. At least at first, until you've built up a small collection of bottles, otherwise you invite your friends, they come, drink everything and you're left without a home bar. Second rule. If you are throwing a party with a lot of people, feel free to ask each of them to bring a bottle of alcohol, preferably the one they plan to drink. That way you'll add to your collection, not just waste what you already have. And the third, very important rule. Use alcohol from your home bar, exclusively for cocktails. If you drink regularly, for example, whiskey on the rocks, get yourself a separate bottle and drink from it. It may not sound obvious, but believe me, it's the right way. Now let's talk about the alcohol you need. Before you head to the store, I recommend opening a Long Island iced tea recipe and getting everything that goes into it. Long Island already has all the basic alcohol, vodka, rum, tequila, gin, triple sec. If there's any money left over, you can check out a couple more cocktail recipes and get alcohol for them too. Remember. It all depends on your taste and the preferences of your guests. Now let's go into more detail. Vodka is the most important and most versatile ingredient for cocktails. You can make almost anything with vodka, from screwdriver to Bloody Mary to White Russian to espresso martini, it all uses vodka. There's no point in getting the most expensive vodka in the world, as I like to say, the better the vodka, the less flavor it has. So get something average, but decent. I don't know where you're watching this video from, by the way, tell me in the comments. But the most popular choices are usually Absolute, Kettle One, Finlandia, Smirnoff, Tito's and so on. There are literally thousands of them. Gin. For home bar, it is also a must. Even if you personally do not like it, there are many cocktails with gin. Negroni, Gimlet, Tom Collins, Bramble, Gin and Tonic. For starters, take the usual standard London dry gin. It is unlikely that you will need Old Tom, Spiced or Slow Gin right away. There are a lot of gins around these days, because gin is relatively easy to produce and doesn't require aging. Popular brands include Beefeater, Gordon's, uh, Hendrix, Tankery and so on. Choose according to your taste and budget. Rum. Specifically light rum. It is used for Mojito, Piña Colada, Daiquiri, Cuba Libre and so on. You can buy dark or spiced rum later, although if you want to start with making tiki cocktails or Mai Tai, you can do it right away. Popular brands include Bacardi, Flor de Cane, Havana Club, Plantation and so on. It is better to taste a rum in a bar or at a friend's house before buying it, because people have different tastes of rums. Me, for example, I can't stand the taste of light Havana Club, but many people like it. But I also know people who can stand Flor de Cane, which I enjoy. Tequila Blanco. Margaritas, El Diablo, Tequila Sunrise, Paloma and many other cocktails are made with tequila. If your budget allows you, it's best to get 100% blue agave tequila, but if not, you can also use regular mixed tequila for cocktails. And also keep in mind that only a drink produced in Mexico can be called tequila, so read the label carefully. The most popular tequila brands are usually Jose Cuerva, uh, Espolón, Patron, Sauza and many others. It is unlikely that you will need a Reposado or Añejo tequila at this stage, so buy Blanco. But if you have extra money and love tequila, grab a bottle of something aged and expensive. My favorite is Zafiro Añejo. And the last alcohol that goes into Long Island iced tea is Triple Sec. It is a strong colorless orange liqueur, usually around 40% alcohol, and there are many kinds of Triple Sec, including Pierre Ferrand Dry Curacao, Luxardo Triple Sec, Cointreau, Grand Manier and others. The last one is made with the addition of cognac, but it is also strong and orange flavored. This set of five ingredients should be enough to start with. Add non-alcoholic ingredients like lemon or lime, orange, soda, simple syrup and cola, and you can make not only a Long Island iced tea, but quite a few popular cocktails. If you have money left over, consider buying whiskey, specifically bourbon. 
Of course, cocktails with scotch whisky also exist, but not that many, and scotch is not designed to be mixed with other ingredients. But there are many cocktails with bourbon or rye whisky, and they are often classics. Manhattan, Old Fashioned, Whiskey Sour, Mint Julep, and many others. Popular bourbon producers include Four Roses, Bullet, Maker's Mark, Wild Turkey, and so on. I would also put Tennessee whiskey in the same category, particularly Jack Daniels. I know it's technically not a bourbon, but it is pretty close. Now let's talk about liqueurs. There are well-known international brands, each of whom produces many different flavors. Marie Brizard, De Kuiper, Bols, Fruckerschulz and others. The choice of liqueur flavor depends on the specific cocktail you want to make. White Russian or Espresso Martini? Then you're gonna need coffee liqueur, such as Kalua or Mr. Black. Blue Lagoon, Adios Mother or any other blue cocktail? Blue Curacao, of course. Best gin and tonic you've ever had? Elderflower liqueur. Actually, you can add almost any liqueur to gin and tonic, and it only gets better. Other liqueur flavors worth mentioning are creme de cassis, black currant liqueur, melon, raspberry, mint. If money is tight, you can buy syrups instead of liqueurs. Syrup is essentially a non-alcoholic liqueur. You mix it half and half with vodka, and voila, you have a liqueur. There's also a separate category – Italian red bitter liqueurs. And the best known is, of course, Campari. If you want to make Italian cocktails such as Americano, Negroni, Garibaldi and the like, get them too. Luxardo Bitter, Martini Bitter and some others fall into the same category. You're also gonna need vermouth for many classic cocktails. It is a fortified wine flavored with aromatic herbs. The most popular vermouths are Martini and Cinzano. But there are many more interesting ones, for example, Padro Co, Carpano, Vittore, Perlino, and so on. But keep in mind that an opened bottle of vermouth must be kept in the fridge, and preferably not more than a month, because after this time it can noticeably change its taste. While we're talking about classic cocktails, it is impossible not to mention bitters, not to be confused with bitter liqueurs. This is a bitter tincture, usually sold in a small bottle, and used a few drops at a time. Bitters are like spices in food, added for extra flavor. The most popular is Angostura bitters, which goes into almost all classic cocktails, but there are also Peychaud's bitters, Bitter Truth and others. One small bottle of bitters will last you half your life, unless you drink Trinidad Sour every day, which is a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of Angostura. I made it on the channel, by the way. While buying all these bottles of alcohol, don't forget about ice. It's another very important ingredient for making cocktails. Ideally, ice should be transparent, so it melts less and doesn't overly dilute the cocktail. It also looks much nicer in the glass, and you can buy transparent ice in a store or order delivery, or you can make your own. Here's a video I made about that. If you are too lazy to make or buy transparent ice, at least invest in a silicone mold, with which you can freeze large cubes of ice. It won't make you clear ice, but it's better than the one that came with your fridge. Some may have been surprised that I didn't say anything about brandy or cognac. I didn't forget about them, they're just not the most popular ingredients for cocktails. If you are not planning on making specifically Sidecar or Brandy Alexander, you can skip it for now. Personally, I prefer Spanish Sherry Brandy, I like it much better than the Cognac of the Cognac Valley, but that's a matter of personal preference. As I said in the beginning of this video, today I'm not going to talk about jiggers, shakers and all sorts of bar spoons. So if you want to see more, write in the comments. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching, if you want to support my channel, subscribe to my Patreon or join the membership on YouTube. Love you, thank you, drink responsibly and do svidos!